digital dharma is what I have been working on for many years. Uh, we have started this uh, organization called Nitarta, Nitarta, which is a Sanskrit term, uh, which means uh, true meaning, Nitarta. And we, were, uh, we have been trying to preserve the Tibetan Buddhist texts into a digital format. Because the existing, and the many Tibetan Buddhist teachings have been lost actually in the past, you know, 100 years or so, with all the political and the social movements. We have lost many Buddhist, you know, very important uh, wisdom texts, traditions have been lost. I mean, their traditional practice has been lost along with the text. And so whatever is remaining, we're trying to preserve it. And so I've been trying to preserve these texts into a digital format uh, since 1993. And so we've been entering the texts into a digital uh, text, not just a scanning. We're inputting, actually, inputting all the text, which is a lot of work. Uh, not only the input part is difficult, but the, the real difficult part is the editing, to make sure the text is correctly input, and we have preserved the wisdom correctly. You know, so that's been quite a difficult. And so technology is playing an important role here in terms of preserving the Buddhist wisdom culture and the tradition. At the same time, uh, it is really changing our world of Dharma practice, not only the scriptures, but also the way we practice is changing because of the technology, right? For example, um, this week, you know, we had His Holiness, uh, the 17th Kamapa teach in New York City. And I was there uh, this week. He was teaching there, and uh, the actual audience in the theater was only like um, 100. I don't remember. No, just kidding. Uh, it's like <laughs> 600, about like, you know, 700 people, okay? And the number of computers watching over the webcast, the right? number of computers like connected to the webcast was like over 3,000, you know? And each, uh, each computer that has connected to the webcast, uh, it's not necessarily just one person, there may be multiple people watching in each place. Sometimes we have centers watching, you know, with like, you know, 100 people or what have you, webcast teachings. And so we can see how the digital age is changing in terms of delivery of these teachings, in terms of practice of the Dharma, because we have online meditation courses I've seen many times. And is there any like an online refuge? Can you take refuge online? <laughs> have you seen that? No? <laughs> Uh -huh. A good idea. <laughs> That's an interesting thing to explore. Um, I've asked a number of, you know, really old Buddhist teachers. You know, I've, I've asked them, can we really present the, what do you call, uh, transmission, right? Transmission of these Buddhist uh, practices over the over these different medias, you know, like over the uh, Skype or uh, a video, right? Like if, if some teaching has been given or the like a transmission has been given on, uh, recorded on video, can we use that as to receive the transmission for the students who were not there? I've asked this question. And one of the teachers gave me a really excellent answer. 
He said that it really is all up to the intention of the teacher when he or she is recording that teaching. He said if the teacher has the intention, put the intention in that, saying, okay, I'm recording this for transmitting, okay, transmitting the, the blessing or whatever of this teaching over the Skype or over the internet uh, uh, webcast or through the, um, the video, then he said that's you know, absolutely fine. And if the original intention is not for transmission, but only for like preservation of this teaching, of this one event, then he said it may not work as a transmission thing. So I think that's, uh, for me, it was a really wonderful thing to hear. Very clear, right? Very clear. Uh, as, we, as we all uh, may be aware that the Buddhist teachings always talk about intention, right? The primary thing is the intention. And so here it is, the intention of the teaching, a uh, teacher. And so, therefore, the digital age of technology is changing the way we are practicing Dharma, the changing the way we are actually studying the Dharma, and changing the way how we are interacting with each Sangha uh, communities, you know. It has uh, so many good qualities. At the same time, it is also very dangerous, I think, very dangerous age. Um, is that okay for me to criticize a little bit about technology? Since I'm at the Geek Conference. <laughs> you know, there is this danger that uh, instead of technology that we have created to bring happiness to humanity. You know, if the technology is making us more suffering, then that's another problem here with the technology, right? Uh, the original purpose of creating all this technology is to bring happiness, to bring benefit to our human uh, society, and also to all other sentient beings, so to speak, you know? I remember in the 80s when I was here in this country that, uh, in America, that, you know, people were so excited about the, the notebooks and the laptops, you know, all these things, computer technology, saying that now, you know, everything is going to be much easier. We will have much more time. <laughs> Look at where we are now, right? We actually have less time, isn't it? Uh, and the horrible news is now the airplanes are offering Wi-Fi. <laughs> right? So our office can even track us down in the sky, like, right? And ask you some questions <laughs> that you may have to answer. <laughs> Right? You may have to send some files or what have you. And so, actually, technology, like a computer that we had fantasy about doing our job and we will have more time because the computer will do a lot of the works that we have, uh, we have had to do before. It is true, computer is doing that, but it's not freeing us more, it's not giving us more time in fact, it is giving us less time, isn't it? I realized one time I was sitting in my living room with some friends, and I didn't, I didn't realize, actually, I must tell you, uh, th this, oh. <laughs> Technology. Time machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You see, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I must tell you, you know, how, how 
how much I was lacking mindfulness. You know, I didn't realize until like maybe 30, 40 minutes into that. We were all sitting in our living room, but after like 30, 40 minutes, I realized none of us are talking to each other. I was wondering, you know, what's happening? So quiet. We're not talking to each other. And we are all on our smartphones. You know, we're not talking. We're all just doing something on your phone, smartphone. And then I was joking with them, say like, actually, we don't really need to talk because we can send text messages to each other, right? Or uh, what do you call that? Uh, WhatsApp. <laughs> you know, you can send pictures to each other. And so you see, uh, as more and more technology is developing, actually, sometimes there's a sense of uh, losing our human in a basic human connection, you know. I think that's the little bit dangerous part in my view. People are getting very isolated in their smartphones and iPads and computers. And uh, one of my friends was really into this thing called the second life, right? Have you all tried that or no? I haven't tried it yet, but uh, my, my, one of my friends really into it, and I really am worried about uh, my, my friend, you know? <laughs> you know. He's talking about all these things that, you know, I have no idea, you know? There's no, like, human interaction. It's all interaction in a computer, right? Digital. And sometimes I think there's a danger for us to lose the sense of uh, what we call the heart the warmth of the heart, the heart connection. You know, technology is great, but if you lose the heart, then there's nothing much there, you know? There's nothing much there. Uh, I think that's really uh, problematic the, these days, you know? Like parents don't talk to kids because kids are on the smartphones, right? Or parents are on the, their Blackberries or what have you. Uh, I just don't want to promote Apple alone. <laughs> so I want to also talk about our Canadian, you know, Blackberry. <laughs> <clears throat> you see, the parents on Blackberry, the fathers on Blackberry, the kids on some kind of smartphones, and moms on iPad. No one's talking to each other, you know? There's no warmth in that kind of environment, you know, like, uh, it's very affluent, it's a wonderful that we're using technology, but also we must save some time for this heart-to-heart -heart connection, you know. That's why I do enjoy preserving the Dharma in a digital format, but at the same time, I can't re get rid of my books. Really, I really feel there's some healing kind of power. You know, when you touch the paper, right? When you flip a page, and when you can smell this kind of, you know, paper, there's some magic there, you see? Which, you, which I don't feel from turning my page, page on the iPad. <laughs> I don't feel the same, you know? It's, it's beautiful to read on iPad or, you know, uh, Amazon, so what do you call that? Kindle. It's really beautiful. It's wonderful. Lightweight and everything. Because I travel a lot. I need that. It's helpful. But there is no magic of the heart yet. And so if all the geeks there are in the world here, right? If we can put our efforts into this to bring some heart, bring some magic of the heart into our technology, I think that will be the day, you know, where we can say, this is it. You know, now we have everything here. There's, there's a heart there, heart connection, the warmth. At the same time, everything we can imagine from the technological side, you know. Mm -hmm.